I'm Cheryl Waters. You're tuned in to KEXP. You can find us at 90.3 FM in Seattle, streaming worldwide at kexp.org. And we are a listener-powered station supported by you. Thank you so much for making these wonderful sessions possible. Our good friend Super Chunk are back in the studios. I'm so happy about that. Welcome. Thank you. It's so good to be here. So great to have you here and so great to have a new record, Wild Loneliness. Going to play some songs for us? We are, and we're going to play the title track first. It's Super Chunk live on KEXP. Live music from Super Chunk on KEXP's new album, Wild Loneliness. There's another song from Wild Loneliness. The song's called Refracting.
I'm out of breath. I'm not even playing. <laughs> Super Chunk live on KEXP. It's Super Chunk Live on KEXP. So we're going to play one more song. And um, the first time we ever played this song live, I'm pretty sure, was here in Seattle uh, in 2001 when we put out the Here's to Shutting Up record. Before the record came out, we played a show at the Seattle Center Outdoors. And um, I think that was the first time we played Rainy Streets live. And we're going to play Rainy Streets right now. Just 
It's like an ode to Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Super Chunk live on KEXP. I love that you played something from Here's to Shutting Up because KEXP is celebrating our 50-year anniversary this year. And each week of this year, we're celebrating a different year in our history. And this week, it's 2001. Oh, wow. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Well, we reissued it for the anniversary last year, so been thinking about that record. I love that. Well, it's so wonderful to have you here, Mac, Jim, John, Jason. Between all the bands you're in, I actually had to write Super Chunk on my hand because I was afraid I was going <laughs> to blurt out the wrong band name <laughs> in announcing you. Um, Would be understandable. There's so much talent in this room, and you all sound so great together every time you bring it. I imagine you actually haven't had a chance to practice together that much <laughs> over the last couple of years. You sound like you've been playing together every day for the last year. It's been four years since we were here in Seattle and three years since the last real tour of any kind that we did. So it's been quite a, quite a while since we played together. It's true. Clearly something locks in and the magic happens when you all get into the room. You know, I've always blown away when a band as prolific as you shifts in your sound so frequently. And you always seem to try to do something new with each record. And that's, of course, keeps it very interesting for your fans. And I imagine for all of you as well. And so when you started work on Wild Loneliness, did you have in your mind a direction that you were wanting to go? I think we had in mind a direction different from What a Time to Be Alive, the last album, which was very electric and kind of more punky and aggro, for lack of a better word. And I didn't want to make another record with that same energy because I think that's hard to sustain in a way that feels real, even if we all still feel those uh, anxieties <laughs> that that record is about. Um, so I feel like it was going to be a more acoustic oriented record anyway and then when the pandemic forced us to work on it at home and record the record at home basically it really lent itself even more to kind of changing the changing the sound in that way you played mostly acoustic guitar on the record didn't you even though you're on electric on tour yeah I'm, i pretty much only play acoustic on the record and jim plays electric um and john and jim both come over to my house and record their parts as we put the record together uh, so it was a very, it was a homemade um, process, but we didn't want it to sound like a record that was recorded in my home studio. <laughs> so um, we got a lot of other people to collaborate with us on it. And Wally Gagel, who we worked with a long time ago on Here's Where the Strings Come In, uh, mixed the record at his studio. Obviously, COVID forced you to do this differently than you would have if you'd gone into a studio like you used to. Tell me how that allowed you to invite the people that you did? Because you've always worked with guests, but I imagine not having to worry about the logistics of having someone be able to make it in studio on your, on your recording schedule really opened the palette up to being very specific to what each song needed. It did, and a couple things we took from making the acoustic remake of the Foolish album that we, that we did in 2019 um, we we put into action on this record as well, including using um, hiring Owen Pallett to do his magic with the strings on a couple songs, and he's in Canada, of course. And like you said, we've had guests before, but it's almost always been in person. Um, but this time, we just reached out to people literally around the world that we knew that we thought would, would make this record better and... Um, the fact that most people can do stuff in their house now really, like you said, opens it up to a lot of possibilities. Talk about some of the beautiful instrumentation. You talked about the graceful strings that Owen added to this record, and I know Andy Stack added some really cool horns, which he uses in Joe Arrow. Um, and of course, we know him from Y Oak, but there's some really beautiful sort of flourishes on this record. Did you? hear that in your head? Did you create those parts or did you just give them the song and say, do what you will? It was, a, it was a real combination of things on, for instance, the horn parts on um, uh, Highly Suspect. I'd kind of written some horn parts out on a little terrible sounding keyboard, um, but then when we got Kelly Pratt to do the actual arrangements, he really filled it out and made it work and then played some great solos at the end of that song. So it was collaborative, even if there was already kind of something in, in place there. You know. 
and you have as many guests in Scotland than you do in the U.S. on this record. Of course, Norman and Raymond from the Teenage Fan Club and Tracy Ann from Camera Obscura and our good friend Sharon Van Etten. There's just talent oozing all over this record. I mean, when you've been uh, a band as long as we have, I think it's always kind of a relief to hear someone, <laughs> someone mm -hmm. else's voice on your song. Uh, and some, it always kind of seems to elevate the, elevate the tune. You um, played Endless Summer today with some beautiful backing vocals from your friends here in the studio. But I know that Mike Mills did the vocals on the record. And the first time I played that on the radio, a listener said, I wonder if Superchunk knows that this song is very reminiscent of Reckoning. And I'm <laughs> like, I think they do. <laughs> I yeah. think they do. But that was fun that you invited Mike. Um, you know, it's, it's an honor to have someone who's singing you've always admired and, um, you know, has always stood out as like maybe, you know, one of the best backing vocalists that you can, one of the few backing vocalists that I could probably pick out, you know, and on a record. And I think R.E.M. was an important band for all of us. Um, and they're also, you know, a, a, a political band in the sense that when we were working on a, a compilation at Merge to raise money um, to help at those Senate races in, in Georgia back in 2020, I guess that was, um, REM agreed to, you know, help out in terms of waiving the publishing royalties on the bands that wanted to cover REM songs for that compilation. And so we were in touch with them a little bit via that. And um, it made it a little easier to, to then reach out. And, and again, David Barbie, who was in the band Sugar, has a studio there. He helped record it. So it was, people were just... I think generally very up for collaborating and working together to make something cool. Well, the album definitely exudes a sense of resilience and hope, especially on the heels of what a time to be alive. And uh, it was nice to have that positivity coming through the music in a time where I feel like we all needed it. And there's definitely some deep messages in there as well, but you have a great way of juxtaposing um, challenging messages with music that feels, makes us feel hopeful and energetic. Oh, thanks. I mean, I think that it's, if the music and the lyrics are both super dark, I think that's a different band than us, probably. <laughs> that's maybe Nick Cave. Yeah, he can do that. <laughs> we can't do that. Well, we always love having you stop by. It's Super Chunk live here in the KEXP studios. Wild Loneliness just came out on Merge Records in February. It's fantastic. And thank you all so much for coming in. It's always such a delight to have you. Thanks thank so much you. for having us. It's great, it's great to be back. Yeah. And we want to thank all of our wonderful listeners for powering this great station. You can visit us at kexp.org and subscribe to our YouTube channel and see tons of videos of great bands that you make possible with your support. It's Super Chunk, live on KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.